Previously, I showed you 8 ways to protect your car from theft. Today, I'm going to show you the immobilizer method from Empire. It is very small, about the size of a USB flash drive. I believe you can buy the unit bare bone for about $30 on eBay. Empire charges $330 shipped to the US just because the company loads it up with custom firmware for this to work as an immobilizer. I suppose I can siphon the firmware out and share the file online, but that's really unethical, so I'm not going to do that. There are other immobilizers on the market such as Ghost and IGLA. Those guys will only sell to auto shops, so I couldn't get my hands on one of those to make a video for you today. I did call an auto shop and they wanted $1,300 to install an IGLA immobilizer. That's a lot of money. And honestly, I'm not so sure if CAN bus immobilizers are 100% foolproof. $1,300 is a lot for something that's not guaranteed. I think $300 is a lot more reasonable. This is what it looks like upon arriving. Inside, you get the units. Here's a Sharpie for size comparison. The eight wires are about two feet long, a lot more than you will ever need. In this photo, you can see I terminated the ends with DuPont mail connectors, and you'll see why later on. Also included is a mini booklet manual, a secret code to factory reset the unit in case of emergency, and two printed pages specific to the Hyundai Ioniq 5. When you order, make sure you let Empire know what car you'll be installing the unit onto. They will program the Empire units specific to your car. Installation is relatively simple. Of the eight wires, you only need six. Two of the top wires are intertwined. They are white, brown, and brown. Yeah, I know it shows up as red in this photo, but it's brown in reality. They are white, brown, and brown. These two wires will tap into the E CAN bus, but for simplicity's sake, the page just labeled this as CAN1. White brown goes to pin 17 of the ICU-H harness. The pin 17 is red. Meanwhile, the brown wire goes to pin 18, which is blue. The next two intertwine is white green and green. They will tap into the P CAN bus, and in this case, it's labeled as CAN2. White green goes to pin 19. Pin 19 is orange. Green goes to pin 20, which is also blue on the ICU-H. Finally, the Empire unit does need power. Red goes to 12 volts and black goes to ground. There are plenty of ways to get 12 volts. For security reason, I won't mention which one I use in my car. On this page of the manual, you can use any one of these buttons to disable the immobilizer. You can certainly do up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, if you want to. Up to 15 buttons sequence. Since this is the pro version, your phone can automatically disable the Empire unit as well. No need to press any buttons whatsoever. I think it's totally worth it just to get the pro version. I believe these immobilizers work by flooding the eCAN bus with error messages. When a car sees the errors, it just refuses to shift out of park. The P CAN bus is a separate bus that waits for the user's input of buttons to turn off the errors. In the next video, we can certainly build an Arduino device that taps into the E bus of the Empire unit to view these errors. Once we know what the errors are, we can hit the replay button to flood another Hyundai car. No need to buy a second Empire unit for this second Hyundai car. Then, to disable the error messages on the second car, just disconnect the 12 volt power source with a hidden switch. This Arduino setup should cost less than $30, so stay tuned for that video. To access the ICU-H, we only need to remove two panels. On the left side of the car, pull the rubber strip out, then go ahead and slowly pull this panel away from the car. We're using a trim removal tool made of plastic. Let's remove three Phillips screw to take out the next panel that's beneath the steering wheel. I'm using a cordless screwdriver to make the task a lot easier. Pulling out this panel was the hardest part of the whole project, 
just because we have no idea where the clips are. Here it is from the front. Flipping it over, you can see the clips right here. Here, 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 here. And that's it. Hopefully this will help when it's your turn to remove. The ICUH is directly behind this white box. There are one bolt and two nuts to remove. To access the ICUH, you'll need to, to lift slightly and pull forward. There's not much space to work with here. To remove this bundle, just press here and lift away. We need to tap into pin 17 through 20 of the ICUH. I really don't want to use T-Tap connector. You can certainly damage the factory wiring and there's not much room to work with. Instead, you can see I use the DuPont male connector and just stab it in the back. Any exposed metal contacts will cover up using the heat shrink right here. If you're looking at it from the front, here are the locations of the pin. Another reason I prefer using DuPont is that if I ever need to remove it, I can. There will never be any trace of modification whatsoever in case Hyundai tries to void my warranty or something. If you haven't noticed, all of my car mod videos are fully reversible without a trace. Once you install the Empire device, you can put everything back together as I did, or maybe you should not. Because you have to make sure everything is working before you put everything back together, right? Now let's go ahead and program the special keys. Go ahead and turn on the car. Do not press on the brake. Just turn on the car by pressing this button twice. Just turn the car on by pressing the start button once and then press it again. The car is now on, but it has not started. Go ahead and press on the accelerator pedal 10 times. Each time, make sure it's all the way down. On the 10th one, your emergency lights should blink and you'll hear the sound as well. That lets you know that it's ready to be programmed. You can program it pressing any of these keys right here. After you enter the sequence of buttons, go ahead and turn the car off by pressing on the start button. Now that the unit has been fully installed and the keys set up and everything, Let's try to start the car as if you are a thief. Press and hold the brake. Press on the start button. Let's try to shift it out of park. And it doesn't work. It will automatically shift back to park immediately. Let's take a closer look so that you can see what's going on here. We are in park. Shifting it out of park will immediately jump back into the emergency brake. Pretty slick. Let's turn the car off again. Now, in order to start the car properly to make sure that it's working, go ahead and press the start button twice to turn it on. This time, we're not pressing the brake whatsoever, by the way. The car is on. Go ahead and input your sequence of buttons. I'm going to do it right now. There you go. Did you hear it? You can hear the emergency brake on. That means that the car is now ready to drive. So go ahead and press on the brake and press on the start button. This time the car is fully ready to go. So let's try to shift it out of park. Very good. We are now ready to drive. You can certainly shift to reverse as well. Excellent. Just in case you want to deactivate the protection mode for whatever reason, like taking it into the auto shop, for instance, 
Turn on the car is before. Don't press on the brake, of course. Go ahead and do your button sequence. I'm going to do mine off the screen. On the last button, press and hold it for 10 seconds. Did you hear that? It blinks five times to let you know that the service mode has been turned on. The Empire protection is off. The car will behave as if this immobilizer was never installed. To confirm that the service mode is on, start the car as normal. Press on the brake and start button. The car is now working as normal, so you can certainly take it to the dealership or where we have it serviced. Let's shift it out park to prove that it's working. There you go, now we're ready to drive. To deactivate the service mode, turn car on by pressing the start button twice. Let's do my sequence to deactivate the service mode. I'm pressing and holding the last button for 10 seconds. This time you only hear one click, not five. Since this is a pro version, it also works with your smartphone. Make sure that your Bluetooth is turned on. Install this app and open it. Press on the plus icon in the app. Click OK. In the car, press the start button twice. Do your button sequence. Wait 10 seconds. Now we're going to press the accelerator 10 times. Be sure to press the accelerator pedal all the way down. Once you're able to activate the pairing, it will ask you if you want to do it. Click on OK. Click on OK. On your car, it should blink at least one time to let you know that it's paired. If there's an update, click on Updates. Click OK. Click on Updates. Turn on your GPS if you need to. Click on Allow. Click OK. When you click on the car icon, you'll see a bunch of information. Right now, the service mode is off. If you want to enable service mode, click on the checkbox right here. This will disable any protection whatsoever, as you've done earlier before. Using the phone is so much easier, right? Click on OK. With the phone connected to the Empire, you never have to input any button sequence. Everything is fully automated. As long as your phone is within 3 feet of the car, just get in, press on the brake pedal, and push the start button as you normally would. This is a huge time saver and less hassle than pushing buttons, right? I should mention, there is a way to completely disable this Empire unit as seen here. This process is extremely painful, so hopefully I never have to do it, but it is an option as you can see. Alright, hopefully you found this video helpful. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.